Emma Raducanu is set to play only her second tournament after winning the U.S. Open. She did play at um, Indian Wells, and the worst of all cases happened. She lost to Alexandria Sasnovich, ranked around 100, something like that, with a pretty disappointing performance. If you watch that match, it was a completely different Emma than what uh, the Emma looked like at the U.S. Open. None of the fire, none of the conviction that she could win any match, no matter what. Um, she made mistakes that looked like mistakes of somebody who was utterly overwhelmed by the occasion. Um, her body language wasn't that great. The looks that she gave her interim coach, Jeremy Bates, kind of bordered on helplessness, I want to say. And you know what? It didn't really surprise me that she lost. And of course, immediately after her loss, social media exploded with, unfortunately, something that we have a word for in German, Schadenfreude, taking delight in the misery of others. There were a lot, a lot of people who just went bananas on this kid. And I don't think any other Grand Slam player who lost that early in the next tournament uh, or any other tournaments then has been called a one Grand Slam wander so quickly. And I wouldn't be surprised if Emma Raducanu doesn't do well for the rest of the year and maybe even not that great in the Australian summer. I played 10 years on tour and I've seen many, many, many world-class players come up in the ranks. And I understand better than most that what Emma Raducanu did was anything but normal. So for everyone who's quick to judge Emma Raducanu is a fluke, that it was all luck that she had winning the US Open, I need to tell you that you need to sit down. If you don't lose a set basically for three weeks straight against any opponents that she had, you are not a fluke. Did she maybe have a less challenging draw than Leila Fernandez? Possibly. But that doesn't take away from the fact that Emma absolutely dominated for three weeks with the increasing madness around her performance. And she still did not lose a set. So no, she's not a fluke. What I do expect though, is that she probably won't be able to pull off performances over such a long period of time, over three weeks, for a while longer yet. And that has nothing to do with her being not good enough or being a one-hit wanderer or whatever some people that really don't know what they're talking about are calling her. It's just the fact that that is where she is in her development as an 18-year-old junior, basically making the transition into the pros. And she now has to do that with everybody and their mom, whether they have any idea what it's like to play on tour or not, being quick to judge her. And unfortunately, many of them take a whole lot of light if she fails. Of course, there have been other players who have been dubbed one Grand Slam wonders. Now, I think, and I could be wrong, but being a one-time Grand Slam champion is pretty darn amazing. So potentially I kind of would have liked that quite a lot if I could call myself that. Just a, you know, side note. So who I'm thinking about when we talk about one Grand Slam wonders, um, Andy Roddick comes to mind, Yelena Ostapenko, Sloane Stevens, Bianca Andreescu, for example. But why did it take so much longer for them to be called a one Grand Slam wonder after their major titles. And why is everybody jumping down Emma's throat not even two months after she won the US Open? And why do I think that she can still win a Grand Slam? Those are the questions that I think can be answered with me just knowing what a more normal development of a young player looks like. Somebody who is not called Martina Hingis, uh, Steffi Graf, Serena and Venus Williams, uh, Monica Seles. These are exceptions. That's not normal. That is not how 
a young woman transitions into the pros. And I'm going to focus a little bit more on the women's side, of course, because that's where I played for 10 years. Let's look at Yelena Ostapenko, for instance. She was already an established world-class player when she won the U.S. Open in 2017. She was ranked in the 40s. She already won a few smaller WTA tournaments. She had already beaten top 10 players. The surprise was mostly because she was only 20 and she was the first unseeded player um, to win the French Open since the 1930s, I believe. She also had a phenomenal junior career under her belt, which is a pretty good predictor, but not a guarantee, obviously, that you make it um, on the WTA. She won junior Wimbledon actually in 2014. So this is all to say that she basically had already played full time because juniors these days are traveling almost just as much as the pros. She had already played five, six, seven years at the very highest level of the sport. She knew what it's like to go deep into draws, do this week after week. She knew what it's like to travel for 40, 45 weeks out of the year, living in hotels, out of a suitcase, having no friends with her, um, family being at home, being a celebrity, because if you win Junior Wimbledon as a Latvian, you are a celebrity, and getting a lot of attention at a young age. Um, it was still, a major adjustment for her after winning the French Open to now being expected uh, to win Tier 1 tournaments. She had a little dip for a couple of years. We did have the pandemic year, so that's one year that most people can kind of write off. Write off. But she's now stringing together a fantastic season. She still has the chance to qualify for the WTA year-end finals. Pretty much the same exact thing in terms of development can be uh, said for Sloane Stephens. Very successful junior career, had some top 10 wins, wins at smaller tournaments, basically living the weird life that is professional tennis for years and years already before she won the US Open in 2017. And then the following year, made it to the finals of the French Open and then ending at number three of the rankings, I believe in 2018. The career, even without winning another Grand Slam that Sloane Stephens and Yelena Ostapenko have had and are still having, is still mind-blowing. But of course, if you win a Grand Slam, the level is raised, the bar is raised uh, to extreme heights and to my mind, sometimes unrealistically so. Uh, but if you've never played a full year on tour, you just don't know how taxing that is on your mind and on your body. So let's talk about Bianca Andreescu for a second, who can, as we say in German, sing a song of that. Um, in terms of development, very, very much the same as the other two. Great uh, junior career. Won a couple of slams, I think, in junior doubles. And then did well at smaller tournaments, kind of you know, fought her way up, played qualies at tournaments and then started to win more and more. But even before she won the 2019 Open, uh, US Open, she already was out an entire year. And of course we know after she won the US Open, she had that uh, year and a half uh, knee injury basically also during the pandemic, but she couldn't have played had she wanted to. So that she's not way further in her development is really the only reason to my mind is because her body just doesn't allow her to. So it's more a matter of can she stay healthy for longer than 10, 11, 12 months? And then let's see if she can win another Grand Slam. I think she can, but she has to stay healthy, of course. And of course, a lot of people who are now, you know, saying, oh, Emma Raducanu or Yelena Ostapenko or anybody who is deemed a one Grand Slam wonder, they can't deal with the pressure. You would think that they know what they signed up for. No. What you're signing up for when you're turning pro is that you are going to make the weirdest and loneliest life choice, basically, that I know of. You are making your passion your job. You are expecting that you're traveling 
an insane number of days. You're expecting that you're jumping time zone after time zone. You're in a hotel. All you know is hotel, uh, airport, and the tennis facility. That's pretty much all you know. So that's what you're signing up for because you've done this for years as a junior because they travel as much as the pros these days. It's nuts. But what you're not signing up for is that when you are somewhat up in the rankings that all of a sudden everybody thinks you're personal property and they can do with you whatever the heck they want. Now, I remember scenes when Steffi Graf tried, tried to walk on a court in Berlin and people were ripping her bags off her shoulder to get a racket from her. This is a person who wants to go hit tennis balls to practice. And from then on, she couldn't even take one step at, in Berlin. That is nuts. And it's gotten worse because now 24 seven, we see everything through social media and very much distortedly. So, so the other thing that you now have is that people just utter death threats against you. Yes. Death threats. Ask Sloane Stevens what she got after she lost to Coco Goff, because people are betting huge among amounts of money on tennis players. And they then feel they can make their frustration public when that player loses, including death threats, including threats of rape and whatever damage to, you know, the player's family. So that is not what you sign up for. You still sign up to be treated as a human being with respect and fairness, but that goes out the window the second you make it big. And you know what? Millions are not going to make up for that. Bringing it back to Emma Raducanu, who's only 18 years old, an age usually where other young Grand Slam winners have already played two, three, maybe even four years full time at the top of the game, winning smaller WTA tournaments and some junior Grand Slams. So Indian Wells, the tournament she played right after um, the US Open, that was only Emma's fourth WTA event. Let that sink in. She did not necessarily have a standout junior career. She did reasonably well, but didn't go very far in junior uh, Grand Slams. And she just didn't have that experience when you're 17, 18, when you transition from juniors to pro, when you start to really uh, play the smaller, the futures and challengers and travel 40, 45 weeks out of the years to, you know, tournaments all over the world, everywhere. She couldn't do that because of the pandemic. Nobody could, you know, it was a very, very weird season, but that's exactly at that cusp where you usually get that experience. So every single time now Emma is going to a tournament, it's a completely different experience. And it is something to be set for, oh, I'm going to tournament XYZ. I played there last year. I know where the hotel is. I know what, uh, which restaurants there are. Um, I know where the training courts are. I know, you know what the schedules are going to be likely. I know what the spectators are going to be. Those are teeny tiny things that really help you settle into your career. Humans are creatures of habit. I always loved it when I got to a tournament and I knew where, what was what. First time going to any tournament was always pretty nerve wracking for me. And I can tell you that many of my peers felt the exact same way. So getting that experience is something that Emma doesn't have. So even without the additional pressure of the media of now, um, you know, obligations she has to the press, to the LTA, that's now normal, but still she's only 18 years old. So even without all the additional pressure from media, from the fans, this is a pretty daunting thing, making that transition from smaller tournaments to bigger tournaments. And now doing all of this with being the U S open champion with four, four WTA tournaments under your belt. Mind blown, got nothing on that one. But to this now also comes the fact that everybody will dissect every single step that you take. And as we say in German, will add their mustard to it, whether they know you or not. 
I don't know Emma Raducanu at all, but I'm making the case for her because I've been on tour and have seen what it can be like. Now, for instance, take a comment on one of my videos that I posted about Emma Raducanu. By the way, if you missed those, I'm gonna put the links in the description. That person was very fast to call her a party girl. Okay, she went to the Met Gala. I don't think that anybody complained about Felix Oje Aliasim, Matteo Berrettini, Venus and Serena Williams, and Naomi Osaka being there. Because whoever put the Met on actually is a huge tennis fan. So she gets that. Um, did she go to the premiere of the newest Bond movie? Yes, she did. Uh, but whoever left that comment probably did not see the post that said that she also had trained that day for six hours on court and in the gym. Um, and I've since deleted that post or that comment, I have to say, because he also added a racist slur. So that is not going to happen on my channel. But that is what has happened everywhere else. If somebody can post this kind of crap, can leave that kind of crap on a channel that has 1800 viewers, if you could subscribe, actually, that would be great because I want to get up over 2000, then can you imagine what they're post everywhere else? So to sum it up, I really wouldn't be surprised if Emma Raducanu has to pay her dues for the next six, seven months. It's gonna be rough. It would be great if it didn't get as tough, but that would be just completely normal to what somebody who is 18, 19 year old experiencing on tour. I mean, it's, it's for a good reason that there's only three other young women at age 18 in the top 100. And they are going the exact route as it would be more normal. Marta Kostiuk, Clara Towson, Camilla Osario, they have a much more normal development. I don't think Emma Raducanu is in the same Wunderkind category as Steffi Graf, Martina Hingis, uh, Monica Sellis, Serena and Venus Williams. So what we're seeing is the absolute normal development of where she should be just with the difference that, of course, she won the U.S. Open. Can she win another Grand Slam? Absolutely. If those of us who understand and appreciate what Emma Raducanu has already done and continue to support her and lift her up as the amazing young woman that she is and make our voices louder than those who want to see her fail, then I'm thinking how scary that's going to be in two, three, four, five years. Because looking at what she can do at 18, once she has the experience of playing four, five, six years on tour, full time, under her belt, it's gonna be really scary. And I think we will see another Grand Slam that Emma Raducanu is gonna win.